Hi, I'm Michelle Moskowitz Brown, Executive Director at Local Matters, and it's Saturday night, and I am going to be making a meaty chili mac. Uh, this is kind of a mashup. My sister Issa Chandra on uh, Instagram posted this recipe today, and I thought, okay, it's one pot. I'm gonna make it. So, got a little bit of oil, kind of preheated here, and I'm going to. Um, get my onions into the pot here. That's the first thing I'm gonna do. I had half an onion left in the fridge, so that's what I'm gonna be using. And I'm keeping, I have the, um, the root intact. I'm just gonna take off the other end and peel this a little bit here. Um, I'm gonna get this onion in and then I'm trying to work without looking back at the recipe. I have my, uh, my herbs out, I've got my spices. I'm gonna make, you don't have to make this cut, but if you want to make a cut, through the middle, it'll help make the dice smaller. Um, if you notice my grip here on the knife, I'm taking my uh, three fingers under the knife and then my pin, my grip, my thumb, and my forefinger on the knife. So you want to be close to the blade. Um, that's going to help you make your cuts uh, safer. Um, you want to have your knife sharp because uh, it'll it'll make the cuts easier. Um, a dull knife is a dangerous knife, so make sure that you are using a sharp knife and really getting close to the blade so you can handle it well. I'm gonna do some rocking, get this onion diced up here, using my claw to move my hand back as I go. And this is all one pot, so it's a, it's a vegan recipe. Um, you can make it with dairy if you prefer or with meat, um, but I am making it with uh, seitan tonight. Get this onion in um, and this is my seitan. Uh, my husband Aaron makes this um, at Tabletop Game Cafe, and it's basically wheat gluten, so it's all the protein from gluten um, and none of the carbs. So it's got 22 grams of protein. Um, it is obviously not gluten free, so if that's an issue, um, you don't want to use it. But also, you're probably saying, I don't have seitan at home, so what can I do? Um, you can use any bean. You can use pindo beans, black beans, kidney beans, any combination, and you will be set. So I've got my onions going here, and I'm going to add some salt, um, whatever kind of salt you have, a little bit of this, a little bit of that. Um, and then I'm going to chop up these carrots here. So I'll take the ends off, and I'm going to put those right in as quickly as I can. I could have pre-chopped them, but I wanted to show you all. So normally, you, if you had pre-chopped them, you could put them in at the same time as the onion. I'm going to cut this carrot in half once I get a flat surface. I'm going to turn it over. So you want you don't want your food jumping all over the cutting board, so make sure you get a flat surface. And then you can just dice this up. Just cut, make long cuts. And then again, kind of you can move the carrot as you go towards your knife. And just again that rocking motion, get that carrot in there with the onion. Um, and yeah, so I hope that everybody is doing okay at home on day 100 and something of quarantine. Thank you all for staying home and flattening the curve. Thank you to our healthcare workers who are on the front lines, people in food service on the front lines, our friends uh, and at ODH, Dr. Amy Acton and Governor DeWine and all of the leadership um, in the state of Ohio that's helping us get through this time. Um, I know that you are lifting up our spirits at home, so thank you for everything you're doing. I'm going to move that around, then I'm going to let it keep going. So yeah, we've got our onions and our carrots there. Um, just to go through the recipe, I've got a can of uh, 25 ounces of tomato. I've got um, some nutritional yeast, which will make it that, get that cheesy taste, air quotes. Um, if you don't have nooch, that's fine, um, and if, if you don't have any of these ingredients, you can you can sub them out. Um, I've got some vegetable broth, two cups of vegetable broth. I have, I'm gonna be adding some spices soon, so we'll share those when I get to it. Now about my garlic. So you want those onions going first, and then you wanna get start to get your garlic in. So I've got about four cloves. I'm gonna cut them in half. Um, one thing about garlic that's interesting is before you apply it to heat, you want to crush it and let it rest for about 10 minutes. So I crushed these cloves before I um, started cooking a while ago. And the reason you want to do that is because there's an enzyme that gets activated 
um, after the crushing. Um, and if you don't wait 10 minutes, you'll lose the allicin. You can look that up, A-L-L-I-C-I-N. Um, but just trust me, cut your garlic 10 minutes before you cook it and you will get its full uh, antioxidant power. That's the only thing I learned from, from this book, Eating on the Wild Side, but I, I'm sticking to it. So get my garlic here, just taking out a little bit of the uh, bitter, like green spot in the middle, but otherwise good to go. Just mincing that, taking those chops, going both directions. Um, I'm not a chef by training, so anything I do, you can do. Uh, of course, if you follow my sister, you know about her modern love restaurants, her 10 cookbooks that I can't keep up with, and um, the old post-punk kitchen. But um, if you're here at home tonight making this, um, this should be a really easy thing to get on the table, no matter what your skill level is. So, going a few minutes here, we're in real time, and I only spent a few minutes before I got on camera here, so if you want this onion a little bit smaller, you can just Put your hand up against it here, the edge of the blade, and get your small dice here, mincing here. That's good. It's looking good. My onions look good. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, I'm going to turn my heat up a little bit. And I'm going to might let those brown another minute. I had my heat a little bit lower, so I turned that up. Um, all right, yeah, let's go ahead and add this garlic, and we'll get things on the road here. Well, all right, yeah, we'll do that. My oops, garlic in. Just let that go for about 30 seconds until you can smell it. And then I'm going to start adding in. Uh, of course, you're probably reading the recipe and saying, Issa says do something else. So that's kind of the beauty of it is like you're making it so it tastes good to you. And um, that is the most important thing that you taste it towards the end and make sure it's how you want it. Um, I did note that Issa wanted me to put in three tablespoons of chili powder, I think two tablespoons of, no sorry, three tablespoons of chili powder, one tablespoon of cumin, and one teaspoon of oregano. So I'm going to follow that part of it, which I, I did remember, hopefully correctly. Um, my chili powder is not coming out here. Alright, let me get a little knife to loosen that up. Alright, there we go. So, here we go with our chili powder. One, two, three tablespoons dangerously put in right over the pan. Living on the edge. We get my cumin going. Mmm, smells so good. And then it wants a teaspoon of oregano, so, you know, a teaspoon is, three teaspoons is a tablespoon, so I'm just going to use my tablespoon and fill it about a third. Easy peasy. And add a little more salt here. Salting the layers as I go, just to get that flavor in. <sighs> this is the part you've been waiting for, just a little bit of aromatherapy, if you're making this at home. You'll notice I did um, brown my seitan in the back. Again, it calls for three cups of seitan. If you don't have that, you can add three cups of beans. And, um, and you'll be all set. Uh, there's a meaty beanie chili you've probably made if you've made Issa's recipes, so this is kind of a, a variation of the theme. I'm going to get a little bit of water to deglaze. Basically means like scrape up the bottom of the pan here before we go on to our next step. And I've got plenty of time in between. Um, so yeah, it's a beautiful day in Columbus, Ohio. I hope, again, that everybody is staying well. Um, check out Local Matters channels on YouTube. We posted um, some content this week. Since we couldn't be in the Food Matters classroom, you can find our content online um, with doc, uh, Dr. Well, he, he, at some point it might be Dr. <laughs> Mr. Princeton Martin um, doing the protein song today with his son on Instagram. And um, you can find our lessons there. Farmer Jesse is gardening online, so please check him out. Um, and get your, your seeds started so that when we get here to the growing season, we'll all be ready to go. Growing food closer to home. So there's my nice mix of spices. I'm gonna go ahead and add my um, cilantro. Um, sometimes I would add this kind of herb at the end, but this recipe calls for it now, so we'll get that cooked down here. Uh, it just smells 
really, really good, which is super helpful in um, what is stressful times for so many people. Um, but I know a lot of you are cooking more at home and also supporting uh, restaurants when you can. So we've got that all mixed up here, and I'm going to just go ahead and start adding my tomato. Well, oh, I'll add a little bit of smooch, so just, I think she said two tablespoons, but we'll see. Um, it kind of has a cheesy taste to it, so just adding a little bit in there. And then I'm going to go ahead and add my tomatoes. Um, you'll notice it is one pot, so when I add my um, pasta, it's going to take a little bit longer to cook than normally it would uh, because it's going to have the liquid from the, um, my mom's going to yell at me because I just touched my face, but I wash my hands all day. Um, anyways, the pasta is going to have some tomato liquid and it's also going to have some veggie broth, uh, but it will take a little bit longer, like 20, 25 minutes, I think, um, once I get that in here. So here we go. Mom, if you're watching, I hope that, well, actually, I'll just give you some of this if you step by tomorrow. We can, we can make the switch, or I can throw it out to you from the, from the car like we did with our medical supplies the other day. Um, got my tomatoes going in there, crushed tomatoes. Um, yeah, and I, I just thought I would make this video. You know, it's Saturday. I'm tired. I have homework, like many of you, just so many things going on. Um, and I just wanted to show, you know, when you... When you really need something easy, this I think is gonna be a really good one pot for my whole family tonight. So I just added my tomatoes. Again, that was one, one large can here. And I added two cups of vegetable broth. So that's my liquid. And I'm going to have this elbow macaroni. The kids are gonna love it. One of, one of Max's friends gives him pasta for his birthday every year because Max thinks he's Italian. So that's always fun. We always have a lot of odd pasta around. So, there's my, my elbows going in there. You can use whole wheat pasta, whatever you have on hand. Um, so, now I've got this going. I'm going to bring it to a boil. And then I believe I'm going to, um, I'm going to cover it mostly, but let it bend a little bit. And that is going to be my meaty chili mac for this evening. Um, once that all cooks, I'm going to add the seitan into the end. I have some scallion I'm gonna add, and uh, I'll probably taste it for salt and pepper. It's always good to taste your food at the end, make sure it's seasoned the way that you like it. And um, I hope that you will give this recipe a shot. You can find it at Issa Chandra on Instagram, and please follow Local Matters, and I will post this once I've got it up and ready. And hope you're all having a good evening and be well.